Hi and welcome to the very first tutorial on coding and game design using Wolf.js. Uh, Wolf.js is a JavaScript library you can use to make your own games and it's inspired by um, Scratch so if you're new to coding um, or new to game design um, but you've used Scratch before to create games then it's a really cool um, website that you can use to move on from Scratch um, move on from Scratch to uh, other programming languages like JavaScript. Okay, so you actually write um, JavaScript code or JavaScript style code um, to create your own games rather than dragging and dropping blocks on the screen like you would in Scratch. Um, but if you're familiar with Scratch, um, then it's quite easy to learn JavaScript game design using Wolf.js because um, it shows you the blocks that you'd use in Scratch and the equivalent code to use in JavaScript. Okay, so to get started, you need to go to wolfjs.com, click on Start Coding, and it will bring up a page like this, um, which you can just start coding in straight away, but if you want to save your code, then you can create a free account. So you can click on this button here, which will say sign in or um, sign up or log in. Um, so you click on that to create an account using your email and create a password and then you can click on um, that button to sign in once you've created an account. When you click on this button, you'll see you can create a new project, you can see all of your projects, you can log out or you can see a list of your recent projects right there. Um, on the right side, there's a save button to save your code. And there's also a button to clean your code if it's become a bit messy. So if you have an indented blocks of code, um, you can clean that up. Okay. Um, to learn um, how to create a first game in Wolf.js, um, what we're going to do, I'll, I'll show you. Um, this is what this is what we'll be making. So basically, we've got a game here where you have a timer that counts down from 20 seconds, and you need to catch as many of these monsters as you can in 20 seconds and every time you catch one a new one uh, pops up or respawns somewhere on the screen and you can keep doing that until the timer reaches zero and it will display game over and you can press the key to start the game again okay so we have our score in the corner time remaining text up here game over and press p to play again message down here we have a, a pixelated grass backdrop and we have a player sprite and an enemy sprite. Okay, and basically we just interact by pressing the arrow keys on the keyboard. Okay, so on the right side, uh, well on the left side you can see the preview of the game. Um, if you click on documentation, this is what might look familiar if you've used Scratch before. You can see different blocks you can click on. For example, sprites and background. If I wanna create a background, it shows you examples and the um, blocks of code that you can copy into your game to to create that. Okay, so if you wanted to create like a a sprite using an image, you can also get the blocks of code to do that. If you want to um, have certain event, uh, check for certain events um, or control, like uh, making things happen every few seconds or repeating sections of code or having decisions, then you can get all the code from those blocks there or search for them. So that's quite helpful if you're not sure um, what code to use for a specific feature in your game or a function, then have a look in those blocks there. And you can hide these different tabs um, by clicking on the X's or click on them again to bring them back. We also have tutorials. So if you click on tutorials, some guided tutorials there you can work through. And on the right side is where you write your code. Okay, so this is all of the code uh, for this game, and I'll be going through this code line by line. Okay, it might look like there's a lot of code there, but if you actually look at it carefully, you can see that a lot of it is very similar. So to create a player and an enemy, we can pretty much just copy and change, copy and paste the code and just change what we need to change. And same for things like creating the text. Um, so that's actually taking up most of the code here. Um, and yeah, it's, um, that's all the code. So, um, what we'll do now is 
we'll go to um, this empty project here and you can see there's already one line of code for us there already which is set backdrop URL so that's a function that we can use to use an image as our backdrop okay so I've already got one here if you click on sprites and backgrounds and then uh, background you can see that there's a few options here we can use set backdrop color if we wanted to we could copy that and get rid of this code and paste that in and we can make the backdrop blue or we can make it green or whatever color we like and we can type in the names of colors or we can also use hexadecimal color codes um, for colors as well if we want an image we can copy um, some code here there's different images that are already provided for us can paste that and we can um, use one of their images for the backdrop um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my own backdrop so I'll delete this code and I'll say set backdrop URL you can click that so we already get a suggestion of what we can type in we'll click that and inside the brackets and quote this is or the quotes this is where we can type in our code uh, or, sorry type in a link or a URL for an image so I've already got an image I want to use um, so I'm going to type in the link for that I'm going to use a pixelated grass background which I've got an image for and there we go so that's the background okay I'll just get rid of this block so I've got more room to see the code and at the end of that line I can hit enter make a new line so I've got a backdrop there and now what I'm going to do is create a player so to create a player I need to create a variable to store all the information about the player and to create a variable we type in var and then give the variable a name for example player and to assign a value to a variable we use equals and um, because this variable or the player is going to be an image or a sprite we need to say equals new image there's different suggestions here like we could create a new rectangle or a circle um, but I'm going to click new image and inside these brackets here I'll hit enter and in between these brackets these sets of brackets that's where all the information will go about the player so we need to make sure that all that information is contained inside the brackets now we have a default image here we can use for the player but I'm going to use my own image which is at this link or URL so I'll say URL and in quotes I'll put in the link so you can just copy and paste links from um, Google or different websites where you might find images for your players to test it out but I've got a gif image I'm going to use for my player which is this okay now that player is quite big so what I want to do is make it a little bit smaller and I also want to change the position of it so what I can do is if there's more information to add about this player for each new line I create I can add a comma make a new line and add in some more information for example width will be 32 pixels height make that 32 as well and I can also set the position so to um, specify the position of an object in our game we can work with X and Y coordinates so X um, is the horizontal axis and Y is the vertical axis so at the moment the player is at X position 0 and Y position 0 which is the center of the screen if I wanted to make the player be on the left side I could use a negative value for example X minus 100 we'll move the player over here or maybe minus 200 move it over here if I wanted it to be in the center I can go back to 0 or if I wanted to move over to the right I can make it a positive number okay but I want the player to be on the left side so I'll say minus 100 I'll add a comma and for Y I can do the same thing 0 would be the center of the Y axis so just here if I want to move up I could say positive number like 200 moves it up here or I could say negative 200 if I want to move it down or any number really so what I'll do is say 0 because I want it to be 
around here somewhere. All right, so that's the player. Now what I can do is add the enemy and it's pretty much the same code to say var enemy equals new image. And then inside those sets of brackets, I'm going to use a URL or link for an image for the enemy. I've got my own one that I'll use. And I'll add some more information here. I'll set the width to 32, the height to 32. Um, and X position will be 100. So it's on the right side. And Y position will be zero. Okay, and you can customize that to however you like. All right, that's the first part. So we've got um, the player set up, we've got the enemy set up, and we also have a backdrop. Now what we can do is um, we need to start, we need to display our score and we need to display um, the timer. So we need variables to keep track of what the score is and also um, how much time is left in the game. So we can say var score equals and give it an initial value of zero. So before any points collected, the score will just be zero. And um, we can also create a variable for time. So we can say var time equals, and we can count down from say 20 seconds. So we'll make time 20 to begin with. Now that we've got a score and we've got time, we can display that on the screen. And then when we add the interactivity to our game, we can go and update the score and make the time count down to zero. Um, but what we'll do is we'll look at how to do that in the next tutorial. So that's it for this tutorial. We've created a backdrop, we've created a, a player and an enemy sprite, and we've created variables to contain the score and time. In the next tutorial, we'll add the text on the screen, and then we'll move on to um, counting down the timer and um, being able to move the player around. That's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.